Hello and welcome to ACS Golf and this week's review. Well, I'm looking at this, the Muir MGHB Hybrid I picked up. There you go. Real closer look at the club. A little bit of a weird thing there, but it's actually it's a very strange looking club. I'll show you a closer look of it in a second. But going into why I picked this up to review for you guys. So Muir is well known for their irons. They're great irons. They're supposed to be the best feeling irons out there. And they are a premium, premium, premium brand. I mean, you're looking at like £3,000 if you want three to pitch and wedge on some of their irons. You know, they still do wedges, which obviously cost a premium price as well. They do putters, which cost £1,000 brand new. So everything about that brand is premium. Now, but I've never seen a Mura hybrid. I never knew they did a hybrid. I never knew they did fairwoods. I never knew they even did drivers. But back in the day, so this was two, from 2016. I think you could got this model from 2010 as well it's very difficult to find out when it was actually first released but they used to do it and it made me think well is it worth picking this up on the second hand market and giving it a go are you still going to get that premium feel that you would get from their irons because we'll go into price about this in a second when we go for the acs gold scale and it's not the cheapest out there so does it perform premium does it look premium you know, does it feel premium? Because when it comes down to Mura, that's what you want. You want that feeling. You want that premium feeling. And so I'm really intrigued to try it because let's be honest, if you think of other brands that are well known for their irons, um, Ben Hogan's one, you know, I think they've, they're back now, by the way, just sidetracking. Ben Hogan did stop producing clubs. But I believe they're about to restart again. But with them, they were renowned for their irons. Everyone knows Ben Hogan irons, you know, Forge, really good irons. But they were selling woods, they were selling hybrids, fairy woods, and they just weren't that good. So I'm wondering if this is the same when it comes down to Mura and this hybrid. So yeah, that's the reason I picked it up. Now, as always, let's have a closer look at this club, because to be honest, it is a weird looking thing. Um, then we'll get back here, we'll talk through the technology that I've managed to find. There's not a lot out there, to be honest. Um, I don't know if it's even released in the UK or if someone's got it in America or got it in Japan and got it imported over, but, but not a lot of information out there. Um, then we'll go to range, throw some figures at you, and then we'll come back here for the ACS Golf Scout and what I truly think of this. Okay, let's have a closer look at this club. <music> So there you go, a closer look at the club. And it's a weird looking thing, isn't it? Really is a strange looking thing. And it's not your normal hybrid, it really isn't. I mean, you show you there against my Ping G430, and it's just a lot more squatter. And that's why, I mean, they really wanted this to be a long iron replacement. They didn't want it to be a traditional hybrid. The idea was to have the workability you know, the control, the feel of a long iron, but just a little bit more forgiveness. So they haven't done what the ping has done here, which is put all the way out the back. They've left it sort of more in the middle and haven't elongated it out the back so that it acts more like a long iron rather than a hybrid. And even say on the back here, strong and ideal trajectory, not ideal height. They want it to be like that long iron, but with forgiveness. And that's what exactly what they've gone for. So going into the actual sort of technology about it, there's, like I've mentioned before, I really couldn't find that much about it. The idea they've got a circle cut sole in radius. I mean, you can tell by the whole of the club here. Circle cut sole and radius, leading edge, made it excellent for hitting out of the rough and the fairway. So, you know, you had a really cut sole here to make it easier to come down and get that ball in here, which is great. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The CG is low but yet strong enough to keep the flight of the ball on a strong yet soft trajectory. So that's what they've done here. You know, you can see here, they haven't shoved the weight all at the back. They've sort of put it in the middle here with the idea to have a good strong ball flight, but not have it balloon up in the air like a lot of hybrids do, because that's the whole point of a hybrid, is to get it in the air. It's that club that helps you because you don't want to use a long iron. But this wants a 
different sort of shot really a little bit lower but still have it hit the green and stay on the green another thing to mention is that obviously they have those two weights um you could get them changed or fitted obviously if you wanted more draw bias increase the weight there or fade bias increase the weight there and that's another thing about this club it's definitely not i don't know if i can show it there properly really but it's not close at all you put this down it's very much a neutral club which again a lot of hybrids are closed you know the idea is to help people not slice the ball so very much a player's hybrid i'd say you know you get the sim 2 the normal one you know the stealth 2 for example very much a player's hybrid smaller profile more iron like to get that control get that trajectory you want and obviously to get that feel and that's what they've done here and that is what they've done here going like a little bit further into it year it came out i did mention 2016 i might be a little bit further so if you're watching this and you know do let me know in the comments down below because all the reviews i can find are like sort of 2016 but then there's a few that are a little bit earlier where people just mentioned it so i'm not 100 sure when it came out so if you do know please comment down below there we go um I just want to mention the head cover game. Oh, it's beautiful. It is a piece of artwork. You know, real leather, soft to the feel, looks good. There you go. And that's the thing. Muri, premium. You're paying premium and you're getting premium, which is nice. You know, sometimes you buy something premium and you just don't get it. With this, you do. You know, premium shafts. This one actually had a Pro Launch Blue, which back in the day, was a very expensive well, I think it was quite expensive shaft back in the day 2016 I'm not too sure about how they're doing now but they definitely were back in the day so there you go now let's that's all I've really got to say because like I said I really can't find that much on it online but let's get down to the, the important bit get down to range throw the figures at you and then we'll go through the ACS golf scale and yeah I'll let you know what I think of it all right Let's get down to that range. So here I am down the range. Now, one thing I will mention before getting into this, I do actually have a slight injury when I was filming this, which was actually doing my groin. So I apologize for that little weird step I sort of took there. But anyway, let's move on. So for me, on average for a hybrid, I want around 210, so 210 yards total distance um, because it's just perfect gapping for me. My four iron normally goes around that 200 yard mark. So for me, gapping wise, I need it to be more well around that 210 so if i go into the figures for this hybrid on average i had a carry of 182 yards total distance of 200 yards ball speed 129 miles per hour launch angle 12 and height 64 so going into that yes it is a little bit shorter than i wanted i did get a few around the 208 mark um, which i generally would have been happy with but again this club isn't for distance i mean what they wanted to do here was produce a club that was like a long iron but had that little bit more forgiveness so a lot of these ball flights it's sort of that penetrating flight you'd expect from a long iron so i thought that was quite good um the consistency as well if you watch all the sort of the shot traces pretty consistent with all the shots as well which again i was very happy with um feel of it as well was absolutely amazing so there you go some figures for you now getting into the acs goal scale but before I do that, I will just say there was two different models for this. You had the HB3, which is a three hybrid at 20 degrees, and an HB4, which is a four hybrid at 23 degrees. So do be aware of that if you're looking to buy one of these on a the second-hand market. So going into the distance, so I give it 2.5 out of 5. 200 yards on average isn't exactly what I want for my hybrid. I want more than that, really. I want close to that 210 mark. 200 is my four iron. So it's a little bit short. Yes, okay, it's 20 degrees. So perhaps maybe that came into it. It's a little bit weaker than your normal three hybrid, which is 19. Um, ball speed there, 129 miles per hour. My ping, I can definitely get better than that as well on average. So it just didn't have the distance for me. So giving it 2.5 out of 5, because it's, it's not bad, you're not going to hit it and be like, oh my God, this thing hasn't gone anywhere. But for me, it's not the longest. And it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be for control, for feel, that long iron replacement with a little bit more forgiveness. Your long iron's not necessarily going to be the longest club in your bag. If you put a, you know, like I mentioned, I've got a four 
four long iron in, in my bag. If I put that up against the hybrid, four hybrid, the four hybrid is probably going to go longer. So it's not for that. And you can tell by the distance. And that's why I've given it a 2.5 out of 5. Now I'm going to leave feel to the end. Because for me, this being newer and being the fact that it's all about the feel of this club. You know, with the irons, it's supposed to be the best feeling irons in the world. You know, I want this to be the best feeling hybrid I've ever tried. So I'm going to leave that to the end, which is the most important bit for me when it comes down to it. Moving on to looks, I've given it 2.5 out of 5. Don't get me wrong, there's bits about this, you know, the whole back that's black looks really nice. I like the way they sort of put a mat on the top of that, that lip there because the rest of it's shiny to stop you getting blinded by the sun, which I think is a really nice feature. But the whole shape of it is all a little bit too rounded for me. I prefer something a little bit more chunkier as well. So I just, I just don't really like the look of it. I don't think it's a bad looking club, but for me personally, I don't like the look of it. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it doesn't look premium at all. But for me, on my eyes, I just, I like much more traditional looking hybrid. Such as the ping, which is muddy because I actually have gone out and played golf today and haven't cleaned it off. So there you go. But. So for me, 2.5 out of 5. So that's why I'm going with that. On to forgiveness now. Forgiveness, I didn't think the forgiveness was that great for this. So I've given it a 3 out of 5. Again, if they wanted more forgiveness, they could have put more weight at the back there. They could have made it a little bit bigger as well to get more forgiveness like a more traditional hybrid. But again, it's just to add a little bit more forgiveness over a long iron. It's not to make this the most forgiving club in the world because it's making the most forgiving club in the world. It's going to get bigger. And you're going to lose some of that control, which they want. You know, you're going to lose some of the feel as well, which, again, they want. So it's definitely improvement, I would say, on a long iron. But if you're thinking, I, I want a really nice, like, forgiving hybrid here, this isn't the one. But it's still quite good. So three out of five. So, you know, not bad at all. Move on to feel now before price. Price is always the end. So feel, as I mentioned, I think this is the most important thing about this club. And it needs to be. And guess what? It was. So really happy with it. 4.5 out of 5. Felt lovely out the middle. It's such a great feeling hybrid. It just really is. Doesn't, don't get me wrong, it doesn't feel powerful. I'm not going to hit this and be like, oh my God, this is a rocket ship. This is going to go miles. But it just felt really good. It just felt nothing like a hybrid I felt before. Soft, nice. It just felt great. It's really, it just really felt great. You know, go and get yourself one if you want to feel it because it, it, it does, it really does feel great. You know, did not drop down from what I thought it was being and what I was hoping it was going to be. It definitely rose to the occasion there, which I'm, you know, very happy about. You know, workability as well, because of that smaller head, I felt that I could work it if I needed to, which is great because in the end of the day, that's the whole point of this club. It's about the feel, about the workability. And I think they nailed it, to be honest. Like, I think they've done a really good job of what they wanted to get from it. You know, that little bit increase of forgiveness, they got it. You know, the workability, the feel, they have got it. Okay, the distance isn't there, but it wasn't supposed to be there. It's supposed to be like your long iron, but with a little bit more forgiveness. I think they definitely got it there. Definitely smashed it. Now, though, on to, in my mind, one of the biggest sticking points, the price. So I managed to pick this up for £70 over here in the UK, which... I will tell you now in dollars is around $85, $90. Just a bit of calculation there because I realized I hadn't actually done that. So it's about $90, you know, 70 pounds. And that isn't that bad. You know, if you want that feel, you want that better players hybrid, you want, you know, a newer club in your bag that is premium, going to get heads turned. Fair enough. But that's the only one I've seen for that price. Everything else I've seen in the in the well, the US market to be fair, haven't seen them over here. It's $160. That's a little bit for me. That is a little bit too much. Because then you're talking over a hundred pounds over here in the UK. Do I think that's worth it? Someone out here who is a you know, Muria fan will go, yes, that is, you know, it's a fantastic club. And it is, don't get me wrong, it's a very much a premium item. You know, and people, you know, collectors out there, because they don't make them anymore, might want to pick it up and, you know, just keep hold of it. 
But for me, if you're looking at to using it, I think it's too much. I think, you know, if you're looking at hybrid as well, go and look at the sim, you know, tailor-made sim. If you want the distance, if you want the workability, have a look at the sim 2 hybrid. So not the sim max or the sim 2 max, but the sim 2 hybrid, you know, where you can adjust it, smaller head profile and you get that workability. Will it feel as nice as this? No, but on the course, it will work better for you to be honest so there you go two out of five for the price i just think it's a real sticking point to be honest i think you're very much buying the name rather than the performance don't get me wrong the feel was fantastic and as i said it's probably the best hybrid i've ever felt but that's you know isn't necessarily a thing you want when you're on the golf course you know all the other hybrids i felt feel great as well so and they're a fraction of the price for a for clubs that are newer let's be honest you know sim sim 2 2019 2020 you know if this came out in 2010 which i'm again i'm not too sure it did suddenly you're looking at a club that's nearly 13 years old it doesn't seem the technology have changed so do be aware of that so overall what do i think about this club i think it's good i think muria did exactly what they wanted to do with it which is quite cool you know, like I've said, Ben Hogan, the Irons, they just never really got with their fairway woods and their, you know, their hybrids. I think Mura definitely did. I think it's a shame they haven't kept it going. But obviously the cost and everything like that price, maybe they just felt that they wanted to concentrate on the Irons because they didn't want them to let themselves down by keep on producing hybrids. So there you go. But overall, if you're a fan of Mura, Go and have a look for it because you won't be disappointed with the feel. Um, just don't expect it to go miles. <laughs> That's my last thing I'll say about it. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video about this club because, to be honest, it's a rare one and I never knew it was made. And I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, subscribers for watching this probably didn't realise it had been made either. But, yes, they're out here. Muria hybrids are out there in the second-hand market. So there you go. Okay, give this comment a like if you enjoyed it. Do comment down below if you knew Mira did these clubs. And if you do, have you tried them? And let me know your thoughts. Um, and also remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new so you do not miss out on weekly golf reviews and other few videos thrown in as well for good measure. Okay, guys, I'll catch you soon for the next ACS Golf Review. See you then.